Cure. Stitch. Jest. Log. African TV Pre-Gap Studio Live. 2020. GSL Season 2. Code S. The Coming Storm. pay you extra for that. Taste story and chant. Taste Gorian. <laughs> All right. So, it's time to see Zest vs. Rogue here once again. Of course, we had the weirdest Cannon Rush game ever that Rogue ended up uh, winning. Hopefully, you won't see that again. We did see some other cool stuff there, too. I think the uh, Adept build on Golden Wall was neat. We're going to start with Golden Wall once again. Let's do it all over again. The rematch. These are the last two players in the round of 16. Season 2, GSL Code S. One moves on. One is out. Both GSL champions, two of the best of all time in yeah. their race. Yeah. But 2020, the competition is fierce. Our final best of three, game one on Golden Wall, starts now. So we know it was the same map for game one. It's actually the entire map order is the same as well. Yeah, well, they already did their vetoes. It's a glitch in the Matrix. It's Groundhog's Day. <laughs> Oh my God. Completely different strategy from Zest here. Qua? This is so exciting. This is so exciting. We've never seen anything like this. Ragu. Dude, one base, he's mining out the minerals to the back. Okay, so he's gonna do some kind of sharp timing attack. At least I think or he is. Or he's gonna just expand back there and play from back there. Oh, actually, that's a good point. Yeah, he could do that too. I would love to see him uh, do some sort of attack. Like I, I welcome either one. Make I a shield know. battery so your probes don't get killed by queens while they mine out the minerals. <laughs> <laughs> but looks, I mean, this is like as defensible exit. as you can get, you know? Now, Keep in mind, when you see a player take the lower platform, usually they get to keep it. It's usually not rushed, but they're giving up the larger platform, the upper two-thirds. And so, you know, it's... Um, it, 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 it can lead to problems in the late game, although I would imagine, you know, Zest probably has a lot of ideas behind this expansion. It's not yeah. simply you expand here and... Uh, try to play it safe. I think there's probably going to be a, an attack or a push. There's already a proxy pylon um, up into the main. Now, uh, Zerg are funny in that, you know, because the layer is almost exclusively made in the main and a lot of the important tech buildings, of course, the spawning pool, we don't sometimes think of it as tech, but it really is tech. And if it's destroyed, it's really a problem for the Zerg for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, we can see Zergs pushed into their main and it's enough to kill them. So sometimes games are expansions being stamped out one by one. Other times, uh, it's the opposite. It's you get to the heart of the base, kind of like X-Wings blowing up the center of a Death Star. You know, you kill off that that key tech and everything else, and the Zerg crumbles. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, one thing I want to mention is that part of the reason gold bases uh, lost popularity on maps is because of this matchup, because it was too strong for Zerg versus Protoss. Right. By expanding back there, he negates any gold bases. Like, you can't take a gold bases rogue. That's a good point, because you could put adepts or stalkers behind the minerals and hit the drones. So, in a way, even though this is far away from most of the expansions on the upper platform, it does set up the option for aggression. If Zerg did get mm -hmm. greedy and try to take that gold base, you would really punish it. Yeah, they would not be able to mine from it at all. Um, rogue is not taking a third. He's just sitting on two bases, playing a very defensive game. He's scouted that there is no regular natural expand. Two base layer. Eh, only one queen here. Wow. 
Actually, this is going to be, what, five kills? Almost. Yeah, it should have been five. Could have been, Looks yeah. like he did a little misclick there. Okay, careful. Just going to get out. Oh, the, uh, the Adept barely gets away. Four kills is real legit, though. Three gates. Three already. Yep, Adept time. He's going for Adept gloves. Ooh. A fourth gate. All right, so we're up to five gate Adept. Six Stop, gate Adept. Just keep going. How many gates can you get? <laughs> Very annoying. Yeah. Look at that. It goes to show you how long it takes for just one sentry to even fight off Zerglings. And actually, yeah, that's that slows a down the claims upgrade. Yeah, not a huge amount, but it's there. Infestation pit on the way, so it's going to be Swarm Host Nidus. Oh, how funny. And that's I a actually, two base play against Adepts. This is really interesting. We've seen games uh, kind of similar to this in the past against Charge. I do question the placement of this. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I always feel like this should be a, as much of a secret as it can be. I think know? he put it there so he could warp in Adepts on that side because otherwise he has oh, to break these you're right. minerals. You're so smart. Okay, never mind. You got it. So another Oracle's coming here. Yeah, this could be, a, this could be difficult, right? Because he's doing the full wall. These are unit compositions we don't normally get to see interact with each other. No, not so Adepts much. Adepts and Swarm Host. So I, I don't really, I kind of don't know what to say. Yeah, this is kind of an old uh, strategy from Rogue 2. He's done things like this for a long time, a long time ago. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see what, what Zest targets here. Because there's four queens. I don't think you can break anything, right? Which means that these Swarm Hosts are going to wreak havoc. That is not a sound he wants to hear right now. Look at this. Well, you know, in a you can't do anything there. Adepts aren't good at that. Oh, man. Oh, look at this poor sentry. Okay, so, like, I actually think that think for the all the strategic over. brilliance of what Zest was trying to do, this literally can't do anything against what it can't do Rogue anything. is doing. This yeah. is like... Rogue has just killed him. Yeah. Just strategically, he has done something that this build is not going to be able to fight. Look at this. He recalls all his adapts. The thing is, there's two of these. It's like, what, are you going to yeah. kill that one? Well, this one's going to go. I was curious about this because the adepts can, of course, target the uh, swarm hosts. Oh, how funny looking is this? Yeah. Well, he'll kill that off just before finishing. All right, I guess he removes these, but they'll just keep building because it's rogue. Like, he'll just never stop. Yeah. But it's only adepts. Like, he better mine out those minerals that go into the main base of, of rogue. I think that's his only chance right now. You ever thought there should be a cooldown on the Nidus after you kill one end of it? You have to wait a little bit before you can make another one? Uh, Yeah, well, you have to wait the actual amount of time now. They did yeah, change but I mean, it a little I mean, bit I mean, I mean longer, like longer, yeah. longer. It just yeah, seems like what rogue does is sometimes especially. Okay, now he's got the pile on. This is getting really, 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 really bad here. Um, it was already bad for Zest, but now, I mean, having the unpowered gates in the middle of the map yeah. means all these, the, what, what you have basically is just the adepts that you see here, which will eventually die to these free units. Everything will eventually. It comes back up. Yeah, you just can't do much there. And I mean... <laughs> I feel like this is what... I, you know, I thought we had our most awkward, bumpy game today, but yeah. I think we've met its match. Well, you know, Zest is an aggressive player, and Rogue is probably the most abusive player we've ever had. Yeah, I would agree it. with that statement. I he think really knows how to win. When he really rose... Uh, to, oh. well, I'll talk about that after this, but yeah. let's just watch. Let's watch this train. Let's right. watch him die. Dude, this is so awkward. Yeah, oh it's God. the, the, the uh, swarm host escape here. And, you know, again. Does Zest still have a chance? Um, Because the entire army supply. Well, he's adding some roaches now, but it's like a few queens and swarm hosts. Well, he's taken a lot of damage here. He lost that nexus, right? Uh, one thing about the swarm host is that this is like the most mobile thing Zerg has, right? I mean, he basically shoots this over here. 
And look, every time he sends us in, if he's not losing Swarm Host, the Locusts are getting really big wins here. You know, he might even yeah. want to try targeting a little bit better on some of these structures. It's and he's going to be able to hit this as well. And it's like, you know, Protoss, there's a cap on how quickly it can move, right? I mean, you get some recalls. You, you can have warp ins, mm -hmm. but your army can't be teleporting quite quite like this can be. And I mean, there's a way to stop this too. You get, you get the, the, the Nidus, but look, man, Zest did a weird build. I mean, his, he has literally four positions on the map. Actually, five. Yeah. He has five areas on the map, and this is like a swarm host player's dream. Look, he gets the uh, Nexus. He's killed so much. And every time the swarm host number is bigger, there's Roaches coming with this. Protoss actually had much more territory, but it, it doesn't really matter, right? I mean, now this uh, Colossus is going to be picked off. Again, Zerg doesn't really... There's just nothing you can do against this. Again, Protoss now knocked to one base with uh, an obscene amount of infrastructure and no economy to back it. Yeah, well, that's that's a good way to put it because he does still have all those gates, but he's got zero economy. Look at, I mean, look at this. It's he he's got go 41 for the workers, 41 army. <laughs> he's just there. It he's is. He's trying to make Colossus. Nope, sorry, no Colossus. And I imagine that with this next attack coming out here, it's just going to be too much. Yeah. Uh, Zerg will probably be only making roaches from here on out. And, and look, the roaches are going to be enough. Look, this is all the gates. His second pylon didn't power the gate either. Oh, it's even sadder. Oh, my god. GG, Rogue takes game one. OK, well, it was a clever build. And then Rogue did something really weird and just wrecked him for it. Uh, Rogue is like probably the most purely abusive player I think that we've ever seen. And we yeah. think of him a lot as a late game macro player because he is so good at that. But that's just when he rose to uh, the, the greatest heights, when he won the world championship. The most abusive thing was, you know, uh, Infester or Broodlord, right? Sure. Uh, but even before that, when he was known as Savage in the Pro League, uh, he was a sniper. He was a very strong sniper in yeah. Pro League, bringing in very abusive, crazy builds. And the thing is, as soon as Swarmos, Nidus, and things like that, like Nidus rushes, became the new thing, he was the first one on top of that, killing everyone with it. Yeah, and, and also, like, that's just, this is how he plays. He's just like, I'm going to kill you in the dirtiest way. Also, it does seem like this approach that Zest had completely muted by the play of Rogue. Oh, yeah. Let's see what happens on game two, Everdream. Again, the loser's out. The winner's on to the last spot in the round of eight. Let's go. Kind of funny that we've had such wacky PBZs today. Well, Zess is trying to dictate these games with his with his builds, but yeah. he's having a hard time doing it because Rogue is also an aggressive cheesy player at times. Right. And if he would just play a macro game, Zest would probably have a good time against that, you know? If he would just do the things that Zergs are supposed to do. Now, how many other PVC builds does Zest really have here? You know, I mean. Other than Glaives? Well, I mean, he's got, he's, he's got a. That's a trick question, right? This should be right? my new book, Shades of Glaives. <laughs> yeah. um, Fifty Shades, 50 shades of with Glaives. glaives. <laughs> yeah, Fifty Shades with Glaives. Uh, An erotic book about Zest <laughs> in all the matchups. Yes. Zest dominating with adepts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, oh, and his opponents. Yes. <laughs> they they want to be dominated they want by those it, adepts. Man. <laughs> they can't stop coming back to Zest. Yep. I need more. Um, so, like, <laughs> I mean, there's all these different Glaive builds he's doing. They all kind of lead into the same theme, but there's a lot of different ways to get there. Uh, he has to win two games now, where Rogue has to win one. Rogue is basically, you know, um, I mean, he's really kind of bent 
the rules of PBZ. He, he really came in here with like a lot of hard insta-kill builds to take on his opponent. It was cool to see him with the Swarm House play. I don't know if that was a reaction to the Nexus on the low ground or what. Well, you stunned that build before, but, but I don't know if that reactive. Was, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if he looks at it and goes, oh, got it. It's super safe, too. Like, yeah. you don't have a third hatchery. Yeah. How you, can anyone ever hurt you? Yeah, how are you going to gonna shade around the map if they plugged up all the entrances yeah. and just sit back and turtle and then pelt you with, yeah. you know. Totally. Um, totally. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing you can do. So, I mean, I thought it was really smart. All right. Uh, gonna, I think he's just going to go into Glaives here, right? I mean, that's what I'm doing. Oh, oh, something different. How embarrassing. Tasis and Artosis. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, and there's still a chance for him to get Glaives, Tasis. Yeah, he can get Glaives later. <laughs> um. So, this game is at least for the Zerg side of things, kind of uh, moving towards a more ordinary game. There is a DT drop coming here. Mm -hmm. And, and this look, is the I one mean, with the third base. Yeah, is this one where he just drops and is like, I hope you don't have detection? Well, I, I believe it's just the three game one where you start off with DTs, you slowly get into Archons. Okay. Uh, but you just start off with DTs and you expand your third base behind it because they can't really attack you. Uh, some Ling's coming, Ling speed, Roach Warren. But a lot of times this is a defensive measure. That is a probe, probe. in there. That is a probe. probe. What's he doing? He's going to hide a Nexus. Oh, look at this. Wow. You know, we saw it a long time ago with people hiding tanks inside the medevac, so you didn't realize it was a push. The bunny. Uh, yeah, whatever he play, might have on the path, like, he isn't going to see that. Yeah, but the probe could just go to the top left and expand there. And this looks like it's an all-in-one. It's actually an expansion build. Zest is so good. What a clever play. Oh, wait, he's just making a pylon up there? Zest. So is he going to double Stargate instead of what we were talking about? That's also so good. Oh. Oh, my God. Well, that prism would like to thank the latest balance patch. <laughs> Well, you can't really use it now. Yet he continues to use it. You aren't in charge of Zest. Yeah, that's right. I really got put in my place there. And then he takes the Nexus here, and I don't know what's going on. Well, thank God he has that pile on the top left. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, just in case. This is really trying to make it hard for the casters here. That's his plan. He can't yeah. make it hard for Rogue, so he's going to make it hard for somebody. In the future, when there's a casting video game, they're going to have the difficulty setting going to be under extreme tasteosis mode and you're going to have to cast this game as one of the final levels. Yeah. They've already seen that. Well, whether you say, oh, get a third base and then that thing comes down there and you lose. You take too much caster damage. <laughs> okay, right, now this, so yeah, this war prism is so low. I think oh. he just... You're kidding me. Yeah. Wow. But it Artosis is two star. It is two star. Games. Yeah. Well, what else could that be, right? What's... I, Guess he's gonna go Phoenix, but please make something else. Please make Void Rays. We have Ravagers coming here. Now, let's say that he makes Phoenixes. I mean, there's a chance there's a Roach Ravager push here, and the Phoenixes are not going to help. Yeah, if it doesn't come too quickly, though, because you have, when you're doing an Archon drop, it really slows down the push that's coming. Sure. So I think it'll buy him enough time to get enough Phoenixes that they'll definitely help uh, if the push comes. Oof. Good harassment there by Rogue. All right, I mean, the Phoenixes, once they get up to a good number, you know, once we have like eight, 10 Phoenixes, that could do a ton of damage. There's not that many Queens out. This Roach Ravager army walking across is not that scary. So the push is coming now. Again, this is a very low uh, HP. War Prism, it's got nine health. Oh, are the Ling's gonna go check? No, they're gonna go back up now. And yeah, that would be a weird place to send anything right now. Yeah. It's just like, that part of the map so does not matter. I like the counter attack. Just trying to control the movement of the army. Now Rogue is continuing to build up here, continuing to upgrade, but is unaware of the double star port Phoenix. Oh my god, wait, does it? Ah! He sees it. 
does. Let's him know that he sees it as well. All right, so okay, oh, I that's like interesting that he's morphing Ravagers. I like that he's blocking off his army. Yeah, that part's good too. Yeah, that's. Now. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm surpri just surprised that he made the Ravagers. Like, I think moving your army across the map so that you can defend at home and you don't lose all your queens and drones is a good move. Uh, maybe I guess they're just here to break force field so he can try to split his army up. Could be. But the thing is, the Ravagers die so quickly to the Phoenixes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, They're prime me targets to pick up. But it seems like he thinks he can get through here. There's just one DT defending. A few more force fields come down. There's still a lot of Lings being made behind this. The Lings are really here to tank the damage so that the Roaches don't have to deal with the Immortals here. Some more Lings are coming through and actually damaging the probes. We don't quite have a full shot of this. There's so much action going uh, on in the map. Now, the Robo goes down. Uh, I actually think the Rogue might have just won this game. Huh. It, it's, it's you know, the Phoenixes seem like they're good because they pick up the Ravagers, and then it's just Roach Ling and everything dies. Yeah. You know? It, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's a good point. That's what we're seeing right now. <laughs> yep. And uh, Probe's now being massacred. I, I, I got to say, man, Rogue, it's good to see another Zerg is going to move on here, unless Zest really can come back from this, which it just seems hard to imagine, right? The amount of damage has been dealt. There's 11 Hydras on the way here. Yeah, you're not coming back from this one right now. Yeah. He's continuing to make Phoenixes, which I think is as good an idea as anything. He's already lost his Robo, so may as well double down. But so, this, uh, is, this is really looking like elimination time. While Zest barely survives this battle, he will still end up losing the war. The next phase is the Hydras. And, you know, keep in mind how many force fields were used back there and the rest of the tech. And, you know, the Phoenixes helped pick up the remaining units, but there's enough Hydras that if the Phoenixes even get close to this, they're going to be killed. See? Like, like that. that. <laughs> and almost that. Ha-ha! Got the queen. But what about your queen? You know, if... He just gets only DTs and kills off all the overseers. Well, I think that's actually going to be the play. <laughs> he might need to do something like that because he simply can't do anything with that well, army. Look at how terrible that army is. Yeah. Especially against garb. Hydra. If only he had Optic Flare. <laughs> uh, we should see GG in a yeah, second. Yeah. Rogue, the last player to move on to the round of eight, the second Zerg played absolutely brilliantly today. What a great group this was, too. Yeah, it was really interesting. I was surprised uh, at the results overall. I thought Kira was going to do better finals last season, but unable to do anything. Zest here getting knocked out by Rogue. Brings his probes out to fight, but that's when you know it's over. What a series. Looks like actually the Hiders might just barely be held off, but I think the next wave Look, I mean, Zerg, yeah, there it is. Zerg getting bigger and bigger, bigger. GG, Rogue takes it. All right, another Zerg in that next round. And guess what? Balance, three Terran, three Protoss, two Zerg. Sorry, Zerg, go done. ahead and delete your whiny, bitchy post. Yeah. Why no. aren't there three? Well, then something else would have two. Great games here today. And Rogue really just showing the ins and outs of Zergs. There's times where he's suffered and not been able to get to where he wanted to be, but you can see why he's in, been at the forefront of Zerg before. Uh, we're going to go to that interview now and see how Rogue's feeling. And the last player to move into the round of eight is Rogue of Junior Green Wings. Congratulations. Thank you. So you're the last person to join the round of eight. In 2019 Season 3, you were able to hold up the trophy. So how do you feel now? Well, I knew the group was a hard one, but I was uh, fortunate to play the ZVP, which I was uh, confident in. Yeah, that's right, Group D is the group that, but you did um, secure the second place by beating Zest twice. Well, against Zest, you know, it's really hard to um, defend against this rush in the mid phase of the game. So I tried to play um, quite passively. And as for Stats, you know, he's more of a late game oriented player. And then I couldn't um, really expect him going for the all in in the earlier phase of the game. And the opponent's arc icon and the uh, force field control was so good. 
연습 때 연습 때 연습 때였으면은 그 대여비 형이 안 받아 걸어냈을 때 제가 세 번째 멀티까지 키면서 you know, 키닝이 uh, 엄청 많이 있어야 되는데 my, um, 확실히 방송 때라 그런지 I was able to be I was able to be cope with it, but um, since this is a stage game, you know I wasn't able to cope with it. Um, good, and you know it didn't go well for me. 전진 부하장 두번 꺼내셨어요. 주성 선수와의 첫 경기 때. You know the proxy hatchery used it twice today. 그때 굉장히 재밌었던 건 주성 선수가 광자풀 어시를 하는데 Zeth was going for the cannon rush. 이병규 선수도 전진 부하장을 하더라고요. And you, on the other hand, went for the proxy hatchery as well, which is equivalent to Zerg's cannon rush. 아니 해본 적은 없는데 성우 형이 만약에 Have you tried this? 빠르게 일수 서치가 안 오면은 왠지 캔로 살것 같다고 생각해서 well, I did anticipate um, to go for the cannon rush. So I did have a scenario. 원래 캔로 진의 심피트를 하는데 안 마당이 순식해 가지고 거기서 제가 좀 말렸던 것 같은데 And normally Zeth goes for a sim city in his main base but he went for uh, the sim city on the front inspection. 이렇게 리뷰까지 해 봤습니다. 오늘 이병렬 선수의 2위 진출로 최강은 so by securing the second place. Uh, that means there are going to be two zerg players. In the round of eight. 어 저한테는 좋은 게 연습을 안 도와줘도 돼가지고 되게 좋고. For me, it's good. 팔강 팔강에 솔직히 올라갈 줄 몰랐어요. And as for the round of eight, I didn't think I would make it to the round of eight because Zerg is not looking good right now. 올라간 거 같아. But I think I was fortunate to play in the round of eight. 연습을 별로 안 도와줘도 돼서 좋다는 게 색다르네요. 요즘 저그하면 아프리카 저그방이 인싸도 많고 you know, 굉장히 핫한 것 같아요. Recently, the Africa TV Zerg players are doing really well. 평소 뭐 교류하는 게 있으세요? So, um, do you keep in touch with those um, Africa TV Zerg players? 어, 성준아, 성우나, 유진이 형이나 현우 저희 팀의 토스들이랑 테란들 있어가지고. You know, there are a lot of Portals and Terran players in my team. 많이 알려주고 하는 편이에요. So they tell me a lot of the strategies. 네, 내부에서 소통을 한다. 자, 팔강 대진에 대해서도 얘기를 해볼게요. So let's talk about, talk about the round of eight brackets. 진영 팀 피하고 조중혁 선수와의 저태전이 됐습니다. So you um, avoid playing against Trap and now you play against Dream in the round of eight. How do you feel? Well, I think it's the best scenario for me. I don't have to play against Trap. And as for Dream, I'm really confident playing against him. 조중혁 선수는 아직 멀었다. So you're saying that Dream's not there yet? I mean, Dream is probably not uh, prepared enough to go for the round of four. So this is your round of eight in two seasons. So before you go, anything you want to say? Well, it's been a long time since I last went to the round of eight. And um, my opponent, um, Dream, is going to be a really easy one for me. So I'm going to try hard and try to win. All right, then once again, congratulations, Rog. Thank you. 네, 이렇게 이병열 선수의 자신감까지 확인해 볼수 있었는데요. 오늘 경기 최종 정리까지 you, 확인해 보시죠. Uh, what a good round of 16 to set up for a great round of 8. Yeah, that was a very pleasant round of 16. Some really yeah. interesting games, some good upsets. Some great uh, plot twists. Yeah, we had great a, players moving forward. Was it Group C where it was like every game was an upset? Some people might look at it that way. Up. In the round of eight, this will be starting on Wednesday, so just a few days from now. DRG versus Innovation, Dream versus Rogue, TY versus Parting, Trap versus Stats. Each of these best of fives, uh, there's so many ways this can, can go, man. Yeah. I mean, Innovation is going to be the ultimate test for DRG, who, by the way, seems to be unstoppable and completely modernized. Yeah. Dream has really been the player we can't quite follow here. Dream versus Rogue. Uh, we had Stats versus... Um, Trap. Trap for the PvP, that's going to be a lot of fun. Two of the best Protosses of all time in a matchup that's currently crazy. I don't remember what the other two games were. What was uh, uh, TY Parting? Thank you, TY Parting. I don't have to explain that to you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, DRG Innovation really stands out. DRG played a completely power-based, army movement-based style of late game Zerg versus yes. Terran that just overwhelmed his opponents. Innovation is literally the perfect person to put that against because he plays a purely powerful version yeah. of Terran vs. Zerg. So that is going to be like two asteroids hitting each other. What is their relative speed compared to each other? I don't know. How do you even calculate that with the GSL on Wednesday? They're going to be like this, like two asteroids coming together. They're like, ah, oh, the one's going to go poof, down, out. Then it goes up. It makes that sound. That's my well. uppercut move too. If I was a fighting game character, like <laughs> there it is. Like yeah, that. you'd be the cheap one. You'd be the Ken uppercut. Uh, that is just—it's going to be a great first day. I think that Rogue versus Dream is going to be really interesting as well. But DRG Innovation—I'm so, so excited to see. It's going to be really cool. And uh, here's the thing: DRG wins that, he can take the tournament. 
it would be very it would be really crazy if DRG actually won this. I mean, when you think of all of the possible plot twists and the fact that there's always people saying, oh, well, you know, once you do your military career, there's no way that you can come back uh, and perform. And then DRG's like, shut up. Six of our eight round of eight players have GSL titles. Yeah. And then uh, we have Trap has multiple second places. And then right. Dream is kind of the, the oddball in there, yeah. right? Yeah, he's the guy we just don't know. But he his looks play really has been good so too. good. A lot of the players that we – I think – you and I and a lot of the people that are watching at home would chalk up to players who are good, and it's it's exciting to see them here, but they won't move on. They seem to be playing better than uh, our former champions. Uh, guys, that's all the time we have. We love you. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Wear a mask. And have a good morning, afternoon, or night, wherever you are. Bye-bye. you up in the early morning light cause something didn't sit right i didn't want to lie about it but i stayed